Matt here with Mobile Solar. Today we're going to be helping you choose the right breaker for your RV's solar array. We'll be plotting trip curves to compare these two popular breakers, showing you when they open circuit under any given load. We're also going to be doing a test to make sure they can safely disconnect a high voltage solar array under a load and we're gonna show you what happens when you use the wrong type of breaker. So stick around to the end to see things get a little sparky. This is gonna be a longer video, so we'll put timestamps in the description and we're gonna link all the products we use as well. Gonna quickly answer the three most common questions we get about solar breakers. The first one being, why do I even need a solar breaker at all if my RV manufacturer didn't put one in? Most charge controllers, especially Victron controllers, will energize the DC bus bar anytime solar is present. So even if your battery is turned off, disconnected, there's zero volts at the Lynx distributor or your central bus bar, and your solar array is still connected to the MPPT, the MPPT will energize that bus bar. So you need to make sure for a technician working on your system or for storage purposes that you have a way to disconnect the solar entirely. The next question we get a lot is what type of breaker do I need? If you go to Home Depot and you pick up an Eaton or a Schneider breaker that's meant for AC current, it's not gonna work for this application. AC current travels in a sine wave and so 120 times every second it's crossing the point where there's no current traveling because it's going back and forth and back and forth. So the alternating current will kind of extinguish its own arc, right? There's no arc because it's not moving after you flip the switch off. When you have DC current, it's constantly traveling in the same direction. So as soon as you throw the circuit breaker, you turn it off, it's having a very hard time disconnecting that DC current and it's creating an arc inside the breaker. And the breaker extinguishes that arc using a lot of times a magnet to suck it out. In an AC breaker, there's just no such thing as the magnet to extinguish the arc because it doesn't need that. So we know that you need a DC rated breaker. The next question I get a lot is what voltage and amperage rating does that breaker need to have? And as far as voltage, you need to make sure that it not only meets the minimum voltage open circuit rating of your solar array, but actually exceeds it by 20%. Because in cold conditions, the open circuit voltage of your solar panels is going to get higher, up to 20% higher than its normal standard test rating. As far as the amperage, that depends on the wire size. We almost exclusively use a 10 gauge wire for our solar panels and we try to keep the current under 20 amps whenever possible. So a 30 or a 40 amp breaker works in those cases. Today we're testing 30 amp breakers. In order to plot our trip curves, I've got a breaker box right here and we're gonna test one breaker at a time. I'm using a battery charger on 24 volt batteries and the charger goes up to 70 amps. So on these 30 amp breakers, I'm gonna first check how long it takes to open circuit at 70 amps, 50, 40, 30. All right, I'm gonna hook up our amp clamp to double check our current measurements. And we're gonna get started with 60 amps going through the cheaper breaker. Um, that's two times the rated current limit. There we go, a minute and 38 seconds. And these wires are a tad bit warm, but they're not hot. The breaker is pretty warm. So we're gonna let this cool down and then we'll retry it with 50 amps and then 40 and 30. I expected that to take just a few seconds. I mean, just based on the trip curves of similar breakers made by Blue Sea, it should take maybe a few seconds, maybe five to 10 seconds at that current. Restarting at 50 amps. Guys, this is not what I was expecting to see. This breaker is really hot to the touch. It's about 36 degrees Celsius, according to the thermal camera. It's been about five minutes of pumping 50 amps through this breaker, and it's not tripping. So I don't even think we're gonna proceed further with the 40 and 30 amp tests. I think it would just take too long to trip. We should be looking at seconds, not minutes. 
So I think we're gonna stop here before this thing uh, gets too hot. We've got our midnight breakers set up with 60 amps of charge current. Let's see how long it lasts. Popped. Let's do that again to get a better reading, but it's, it was about seven seconds. Five point eight seconds. It's pretty good. It's pretty much what we were expecting to see. So let's try with fifty and then forty. All right, we're all set up for fifty amps. Eight point four seconds. Not bad. All right, we're all set for forty amps. 16.1 seconds. Let's bump it down to 35 and then 30. Okay, we're all set for 35 amps. 23 seconds, 30 amps and go. 50, 55.1 seconds. So to recap, the cheaper breaker took way too long to open the circuit. Um, it was carrying 50 amps for, we, we went to eight and a half minutes and it was getting quite warm, so we turned it off. The midnight solar breakers popped very quickly when they were exceeding or even hitting 30 amps of current. So the results were pretty much as expected for the midnight breaker. Um, the important thing for your solar disconnect is mainly that it can handle the high voltage disconnect. As far as the amount of time it takes to trip under high current. As long as you've wired your solar array correctly, that shouldn't really matter. You should never experience too much current coming from your solar panels. So not super concerning, but it does obviously highlight that the midnight breaker has been third party tested and it is what it says it is. All right, now let's move on to the high voltage solar panel disconnect test. We've got six 300 watt bifacial panels out there. They're 300 watts each, an open circuit voltage of about 40 volts. So we're looking at about 240 volts of open circuit voltage that the breaker will have to handle. The midnight breaker is rated for 300 volts DC and the cheaper breaker is rated for 400 volts DC. So we've got our PV positive, our PV negative. Mark's gonna go ahead and make that connection um, so that the positive's now connected. We've got 224 volts DC coming in. There's nothing on this side of the breaker, zero volts, because we've got the breaker off. Um, I've got my little pigtail here where if the breaker does fail to extinguish the arc, I'll be able to cut the wire and separate it far enough to extinguish the arc on my own. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap on here. Switch this to current mode and I'm gonna flip this on. We've got eight amps of current flowing. The, you know, turning it on is the easy part. Let's see if we can turn it off. Big moment. Whew. It did work. I definitely heard an arc. You could definitely hear an arc in there. All right, so it's kind of scary to see it arcing. Clearly you can see the spark, but the breaker is definitely doing its job. 224 volts again, zero volts because it's off. I'm gonna switch it over to DC current, seven and a half amps. Silence. Nothing, that's great. And it, and it is killing the volt, the amperage is going to zero. So with the midnight breakers, we're hearing no noise. We're not seeing any noticeable flash. So the arc is being extinguished much quicker. And uh, you know, high voltage DC connections are easily the most dangerous portion of your RV solar system. 
if you're stacking more than two or three panels in series, that can get pretty scary. So it's definitely worth it. Spend an extra couple bucks to get the UL listed breakers. Now let's find out what happens when we connect that same solar array, 224 volts DC to this 42 volt DC rated automotive breaker that I see a lot of RV solar installers using for their solar arrays. All right, we're gonna be connecting 224 volts DC across this automotive breaker. Turning it on should be fine, but when we turn it off, it should not be able to extinguish the arc. So let's see what happens. Six amps of current flowing. Let's make sure you guys can hear this. Still five and a half amps. It's definitely arcing. I can hear, I can smell it. Seeing some smoke. We're gonna go ahead and cut this. And the fire's out. So that's why you always wanna use the properly rated fuses and breakers on your solar system. Hope you found this video helpful. If you need assistance with anything else RV solar related, don't hesitate to reach out.